Apparently, you will be fined up to $1,000 for throwing a football or a frisbee on a local LA County beach. I hate this planet. Alright guys, so in order to start off, you have to first of course import your footage into After Effects to convert it to an image sequence. Uh, I have mine actually right now in a TIFF format. We're going to use IFF for the actual rendering of within Maya and within PF Track. So mine look a little bit different from yours since you will probably be using your average run of the mill MOV. So anyways, of course to start off, you got to go over to your projects panel right here, select it. Um, anywhere along here, you want to right click and select import file. Now you want to go where you have your saved. Mine is under image sequence 2 here and you want to just import it. Alright, so now mine are all open. If you notice, it's a pretty big name and we need to cut that down later. But for now, let's drag over our little icon here with our image sequence or for your matter, your video over to our new composition button. Alright, there you go. Now the only thing we really have to do is go over to our composition, add a render queue. Now you want to go under your current render, under your comp name over here. You want to select best settings. Make sure, of course, uh, you're using OpenGL if you like to do it fast. Depends. If you got a fast graphics card like me, <coughs> GTX 580. Uh, next thing is very important, please pay attention. You have to use a frame rate, well you don't have to, but you have to use a frame rate of either 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60, because Maya for some reason does not use 29.947. But then again, all freaking video files are made by DSLRs and like almost all video cameras are in 29.47. Hello, Sherlock, are you there? Anyways, just make sure it's selected to 30. Next thing now, you want to go over to your output module, select that, and you want to make your format to IFF since we're going to use it in Maya. You don't have to, you can make it as a JPEG, but IFF and TIFF and Targa, I believe, are completely lossless. So in our case, it doesn't really matter, but just to keep things sequential, let's use an IFF. So select that and now press OK. Now here's the important thing. You want to actually go up back up to your projects panel, Select your little comp and now rename it. Now rename it to whatever, it doesn't matter, but do not use any spaces, marks, colons, whatever it is. The reason why is because Maya cannot actually read any spaces or slashes or anything like that. The only format that they use are periods. So all you want to do really is just name it a single word. It's perfectly fine. Or test 111 without any words, doesn't matter anyways. So now that's checked. You notice down here to your output two, it's changed to test underscore yada yada dot iff. Now what you want to do is you want to over to your output two under the drop down menu. You want to select custom. Now, like I said, this is very important as much as the frame rate is. Over here, you have your comp name, a little space, well underscore actually that serves as a space for After Effects. Your number sequence that the files come into. Uh, period which serves I think even as another space I'm not really sure how it works with After Effects and of course your file extension all you have to do is just delete this underscore and select a period to go with it so comp name period a uh, bunch of numbers period file extension and that's it now all you gotta do now is of course render so like I said the two main big things you gotta worry about frame rate that are exact of 24 25 and 30 and you want to make sure you have no spaces at all. And if you do, you only want a maximum of two only using periods. So let's see how this works now after we're done rendering. All right, then now let's check out our new image sequence. Let me just minimize this and drag this over from my other screen. There you go. Check it out. Now our IFFs are now all in sequence with each other. The name correctly, test.000. Uh, with the prefix of the file format at the end, which you can't see right now, but it's physically there as a picture. So normally it should read test.0000.iff for older computers like XP, but that's besides the point. The point is we've got a cool image sequence. Now let's just boot this up into PF Track 2011 and actually get some tracking done with it. All right, now you're in PF Track 2011 and we need to now find our files. So you're going to either navigate one of these three viewports, which is your cinema viewer your uh, media bin here and your browser for your files. So go over here and click your browser. These I believe are some of my older projects so you probably won't have anything like this but just see I do a lot of stuff see huh I'm not lazy. Anyways go over to your right panel right here and go look for your files. Mine is under C users Chris desktop to new, new news new folder there it is. 
and here we have my original files that I've rendered from, which is a TIFF sequence, which actually was a render of an MOV file for my DSLR. So click your image sequence, and you can see it's right there. Click the left mouse button and drag it all the way over to your little panel over to the left here, which is your tree view, and let it go. Check it out. Now you're in your little viewport. Okay. So you've probably seen my other tutorial with the basics of PF track, but for this one, we're going to get in a little bit more in depth and just trying to really get the best possible results we possibly can. So more or less the same thing, but just a bit more stuff. All right, guys, now coming back to the whole frame rate issue, this is really important. In fact, this is probably the second or first most made mistake you're going to have in Maya when you're exporting image sequences out to it. First thing, of course, is naming your sequences right with two periods instead of an underscore. And next would definitely be the frame rate. Now, for the frame rate, you just want to go down to your clip here and select frame rate and change it to 30, not 30.0001, just plain old 30.000. Make sure your in point is set at zero for your first frame or however you like, and your out point set at your frame of your choosing. Frame offset, you don't need to do anything like that. De interlacing. Uh, this is if you have a 1990s camera or just a horrible camera in general. And if you do, please go away and stop watching this video because you make me embarrassed. Uh, camera preset, just leave it at HD 1080p. This is usually run of the mill stuff. Your film back should probably be automatic unless you're using some weird Japanese state of the art super camera. So if you don't know what film back is, Google it because. It's really unnecessary if you're using your average run of the mill DSLR like I am. Okay, so now what you want to do, go up back up to your tree viewer, right click your uh, video node, and select auto track. Now, we've done this before, but this time we're going to do it differently. Um, we're going to select our candidate number and really bump it up. I want to use like 500. This will probably take about a good half an hour for my computer to simulate around 240 frames. Well, not to simulate, to track. And you want to press your target number to something like around, let's say, 400. So for my preferences, I want to have about three-fourths of the number of candidate trackers that I'm going to put out, which is 500. So around three-fourths is, I don't, I'm not going to do the math. Let's say 400, okay? Window size, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, that's usually pretty normal unless you have a huge amount of movement going on. And if you do mess around with this. I'll cover this in a later tutorial. Let's just move on to this. Uh, feature scale, you want to put small since this is a small scale. Proxy, none of that. Search mode, this is very important. Click better accuracy. It will probably uh, bump up the time by about 20 to 40 percent, but it is definitely worth it. You will see a small little difference, but that difference is pretty big once you see it in a final render. Deformation, uh, I usually like to put in all the deformations just in case if I really move, you know, an inch back or two inches forward, things like that. And, well, that's it. This is only really if you have it on a tripod or a rail system. Now you just want to go over here and select auto track. Okay, then, so as you can see here, we have over 500 little trackers going on. And now let's just wait a bit to see when this thing is all nice and done.